Hey guys, it's Playscribe back with more Genshin Impact. I'm now doing what's probably the final video regarding Xiao. I have more or less some numbers to assess Xiao's performance. I will be comparing the lower and upper limits of Xiao himself. Then I will be comparing him to other carries in the game. I will provide a revised guide on how to deal with his energy issues. Then follow it up with my revised approach to team building. I will then speak in details regarding his pros and cons. And finally end the video by giving my final take on Xiao. First of all, I'm going to talk about the difference in Xiao's own personal damage. The reason why this is a big deal is because as I have covered before, Xiao has serious problems with energy. So I think it's the first time people do a deep dive calculation between ER and non-ER weapons. Just as disclaimers, all the ER weapons listed here will always use attack percentage sense. The assumed moveset is the N1 CHJP moveset I have mentioned from the previous video. I have gathered the data from various sources including my own projections, but I need to give credits to Zakharov and Nalthian. I used their data as a base for me to tabulate some of these numbers. Okay, so this is the full list of the weapons for Xiao that are important to mention. I am dividing them between 4 star and 5 star weapons and also between the ER path or the attack path. By ER, I refer to when the weapon has an innate ER substat or by using ER on sense instead of attack. First things first, Crescent Pike is just the least useful weapon for Xiao because physical damage stat is irrelevant for Xiao. When you use ER Sense on Crescent Pike, it has the lowest DPS. And when you use Attack Sense on Crescent Pike, the performance is around the same level as most other ER weapons. So while the DPS output is similar, it has no help in the energy department at all. For that reason, the lowest threshold for the free-to-play friendly choice is the Prototype Star Glitter. For 5-star weapon, the best possible damage is the unreleased Polo Arm Homa. The best possible damage for 4-star is Black Cliff. The best 4-star weapons, Black Cliff and Deathmatch, both outperform the damage of ER 5-star weapons. The Black Cliff is the closest to a 5-star weapon performance. With the exception of Black Cliff, ER weapons of the same rarity have similar performance. And when you switch between attack and ER sense, the performance drop is around 20%. Now, using prototype star glitter, I'll be comparing it to other weapon choices. Against the closest ER weapon from Gacha, the Vavonius Lance, the difference is only 6%. The difference against the best 4 star ER weapon is 19%. The difference against the best 4 star weapon setup is 36% and the difference against the best 5 star weapon is 63%. Also, if you're using Black Cliff, you're looking at only 10% difference against Homa. Now that we have gone through Xiao's variable performance, let's compare him to other carries in the game. I will be using 4 star weapon comparison because the 4 star weapons are a lot more accessible. Do take note that this is only the theoretical stealing. You can pause to look at the rankings and details, but basically the highest theoretical DPS in the game is Gan Yu. I'm including Ning Kuang at C6 because she is a 4 star, so it is reasonable to aim for C6 unlike the 5 stars. At best, Xiao's performance is close to Klee and is slightly above the luck, so he's definitely in the upper tiers of DPS carries. But just as an aside, the luck on a 5 star will outperform Xiao on a 5 star. If you don't use Xiao's best weapon though, his performance dips to just lower than C0 Ning on Wissif, who is on par with Kaching. So Xiao on Favonius is about 12% lower than them. Nevertheless, at worst, he is still above Superconduct Razor by around 10%. Meaning at best, he can outperform most other carries only outperformed by Ganyu, Ning and Klee. He has similar performance with Dilek Vape, which is a big deal because Dilek's easy to play style sets a high bar on consistent DPS. At worst, he is an upgrade from Razor. Now let's move on to the big topic around Xiao, energy. How much energy is enough? Luckily, Shadow Build and Pichu came up with this sheet, so there's no more guessing. Basically, you go to the DPS calculator and energy sim and try your combinations and make sure that you can achieve at least 70 energy on a full team rotation. When you have other members in the team with Favonius weapons, it will allow Xiao to use attack sense and achieve the upper limits of his potential. Normally, getting to 120 to 140 ER through substats will significantly aid the energy problems. Bear in mind that when you funnel enough energies to Xiao, your teammates better have enough energies for their own uptime needs. Next, I'm going back to the topic of team building. If you have all the ways to tackle the energy issues, 
The remaining focus is solely on utility and damage. By utility, I refer to crowd control, grouper, shield breaker, and status cleanser. And to increase damage, I refer to buffer, debuffer, and off the field damage. So for utility, you just bring whatever you need, but for grouping, normally you resort to animal characters like Sucrose, Animal MC, Gene. For Freeze, you normally go to characters like Sing Chu, Barbara, Kea, and Diona. For Shield Breaking, you can either bring the right elemental counter or use his plunging attacks, but at a slower rate. For Geo Shields, you can easily bypass them. So the biggest challenge for Xiao would be the Fatui shields. For buffing, you can bring someone like Bennett or Jean with high constellations. For debuffing, you can bring Chong Li or Mona. For off the field damage, the best choices are still Albedo, Fischl, Beidou, and Sing Chu. A hyper carry Xiao team generally looks like this. Xiao, Chong Li, Albedo, Bennett. Let's sum up Xiao's pros and cons. Let's start with his strengths. The first one is that he has a high AoE performance, dealing a wide AoE attack in a circular shape. It means that when you are being surrounded from all sides, Xiao has a very easy time to attack everyone. Secondly, at C0 Xiao, the AoE ceiling is only outperformed by Gan Yu. Unless Xiao is at C6, where he is currently the best in the game. Next, in comparison to 4-star weapon performance, his performance is actually near to the look level, so he is currently sitting comfortably in top tier. But even on 5-star weapon performance, he is only about 10-20% to worse than the look. Next, Xiao's plunging attack can avoid attacks, bypass shields, his plunging attack also does a knockback, so it is possible to do a stun lock. Xiao does not require enablers, so his teammate choices are very very flexible as long as his uptime issues are solved. It also means that you don't necessarily need official or sing Chu to be on the same team in Abyss. Finally, on a casual level, the bottom floor is quite high. Spamming the plunge attack instead of the best DPS string results in only about 20% DPS loss. Moving on to Xiao's weaknesses. Number 1. He can't iframe mid-air. You can delay your landing by suspending yourself in the air, but sometimes the best way to avoid the attack is to land as fast as possible and then time your dashes. Number 2, it's difficult to maintain a 100% burst up time, it means that he is far from free to play friendly. Number 3, the DPS performance ceiling is frame sensitive, it's difficult to achieve consistently. He does require a healer because his ultimate drains his health continuously, which is not a big deal if you normally bring a healer anyway. Number 5, his plunging attack does a knockback which can lead to DPS loss. Number 6, a 5 star weapon is more beneficial to other 5 star units like Deluk, Gun Yu, Klee. And lastly, he may have to sacrifice attack way more than other carries for the sake of energy recharge depending on the team. In conclusion, Xiao's damage ceiling at C0 is an even performance amongst the best carries in the game. He performs well in both AoE and single target settings. Favonius weapons are important for both Xiao and the team so you may have to chase many of these weapons if you are really committed to Xiao. At the end of the day, I think Xiao is a very balanced character. He is not broken broken, but if you do need him to perform as a carry, at the right setting, he can fulfill that role well. If you are in need of a hyper carry, if you love his fun playstyle, I think you should pull for Xiao. But he is not a must pull in that he's not game breaking to the extent of Venti, as you can have other carries like Deluxe, Kaching, Ning, and Banner to fulfill the same role. That's all from me. I've been Blazescribe. I hope this video was useful to you guys. Please leave a like if you do and subscribe for more Genshin Impact content. Have a great one, guys. Bye bye.